Good morning and welcome to our weekly update um, with regards to COVID and things happening in Situate. My name is Maura Curran from the Board of Selectmen and today we have Jim Boudreau, Superintendent Burkhead and School Committee Chair Peter Gates with us. So welcome, it's a beautiful day out there. Welcome in November with some crisp air. Get out if you can because it's gorgeous. Um, just a couple of town updates. As we know, election day is upon us uh, tomorrow. The polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Situate High School. So I have a couple of announcements that I'm going to go down because I know there's been a lot of options this year and it can get a little bit confusing. So bear with me. So number one, if you received a mail-in ballot and you wish to vote in person instead, when you go to the polls tomorrow, you must visit the clerk's table first. Do not proceed to your precinct. Okay, so that's for those of you that received a mail-in ballot, but you've changed your mind and you want to go in person. Number two, um, if you will be out of town tomorrow, you can vote absentee up until noontime in the clerk's office. And that is only if you won't be in town. So please uh, respect that. Early voting did end on Friday. And then also, if you received a mail-in ballot and you can't get to the polls, you can uh, bring that mail-in ballot to town hall um, all day tomorrow. The, the ballot box will be outside town hall or you can bring it inside to the clerk's office as long as hours are open, which I believe is just till 7.30 p.m., Jim, right? All right. So please respect all of that. Um, we've already had 50% of the population vote. So thank you very much. Be a part of the solution. Get out there and vote. And uh, if you have any questions, give us a call because I know there are a lot of different things going on. Um, and then lastly, uh, tomorrow night, there is a Board of Selectmen meeting. It'll be Zoom from 6.30 p.m. And uh, please join us. We'll be reviewing things like the capital plan and also continuing to interview uh, many appointments for boards and committees. So with that, I will turn it over to Jim. Good morning. We'll start as we always do with our COVID update. Uh, we had a very tough week since Monday. We've had 10 new cases last week, um, eight separate households and two households that were previous cases with another family member in there uh, testing positive. Mm -hmm. On a positive note though, we went from red to yellow last Thursday. We went down, which resets our positivity clock. If you're in red for three consecutive weeks, then you must roll back your opening from 3-2 to 3-1. Uh, Plymouth and Kingston rolled back previously. Uh, as of Thursday, Weymouth, Rockland, Hanover, Hingham, Pembroke, and Marshfield have all rolled back to 3.1, phase three, step one. Uh, that limits the gatherings back down to 50 for outside, uh, removes bar seating and restaurants, and a few other things. Gyms are also gonna be impacted by that. So um, we talk about it all the time. Uh, I know people out there think that they don't wear a mask, but they need to understand that they're not wearing a mask impacts everything we do. It impacts our businesses being open. It impacts our schools being open. It impacts the elderly. It impacts those people that have prior conditions. So we need everybody to be vigilant. We need them to put their mask back on. Uh, the numbers are going up all across the state. If you're sick, stay home, wear a mask, wash your face. But uh, we are back in yellow, which is good. Uh, Norwell and Duxbury are also in yellow. Cohasset went red for the first time on Thursday, so we are surrounded really by a sea of red right now. Uh, and the ban on watering, we still have a severe drought up from the extreme drought. Uh, the reservoir is up to 33% full. That's up from 29 last week. We got three and a half inches of rain almost last week at the treatment plant. That was great. And our average use was 485,000 through the plant, down from 505 the week before. Uh, we still need to do better. Again, we think the usage being down is not from people not watering because of the ban. We think it's because it's been rainy. Uh, we're going to have a couple of nice weeks, and then the long-range forecast is for uh, average wet weather going forward, so we're looking to see that reservoir keep going up. Uh, the water department will continue our flushing program, weather and water dependent. If we think we have water to flush, we will flush. If we don't, we will not. Uh, but also the water department is going to start the seasonal shutoffs that we see. Uh, as we did in the spring when we did the turn-ons, there will be no contact shutoffs. We need to keep those guys in the water department safe from COVID so they can operate the plants. Uh, if you wish to have your water shut off, go to the water department webpage on the town website. There's a form you can fill out, turn it back in, and we'll get someone out there to help you with your seasonal water shut off. A quick reminder that the police will be at the old gates today for their final day of training. If you see the police cars out there and see some activity, it's just a training exercise. 
Uh, and finally, um, we will be having a special town meeting two weeks from tonight on Monday, November 16th at 7 o'clock in the high school gym. Uh, the town meeting is necessary to reconcile accounts for the current fiscal year. There are 16 articles on the warrant, the majority of which are routine in nature when people see them at every town meeting. Uh, the warrant is currently available on the town website. Uh, all required COVID-19 protocols will be followed. We have additional overflow space set up to ensure social distancing at town meeting. Uh, we know other communities have had their town meetings and special town meetings inside safely, so we're confident if everybody follows the rules and cooperates, we'll be able to have our town meeting quickly and safely on the 16th. That's what I have for today. All right, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jim. Superintendent Burkhead? Well, I guess or Peter, sorry. Uh, yeah, the John Gates first. Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> thank you. I, uh, I don't have that much to report on. I just wanted to uh, remind everyone we do have a school committee meeting tonight, uh, 6 p.m. It will be via Zoom. Uh, I guess the agenda item of uh, interest may be just it's our first real look at our budget uh, as a school committee to see exactly how uh, COVID has impacted the schools directly. Um, and for those that have attended meetings in the past, Dr. Dutch has a little bit of a cult following, so he'll be on the stage tonight uh, uh, for your entertainment and information. So look forward to that. We'll see you at 6. Uh, Superintendent Burkhead. Thank you, Chairman Gates. Um, uh, just a little update on the um, health and wellness or COVID. I know uh, town administrator uh, had brought us up to date. I just want to let the school folks know that there was one staff member case in the district last week to bring our total up to 11 cases over the first six weeks of school. So we're doing pretty well there. And the, uh, despite um, being in the red for that short distance of time, and I'm proud of the fact that we haven't had any community spread in our schools. So keep up the good work, everybody. Uh, and also part two COVID testing. We've partnered with the town to test over 300 staff members. We've extended that to uh, through December. Uh, all tests received and processed have been negative. So more good news, a good peace of mind to know that we're doing what few other communities are doing, uh, proactively testing our staff um, and it is free for them. A friendly reminder from the nursing department that uh, the Mass Department of Public Health has announced that influenza immunization will be required for all children six months of age and older who are attending Massachusetts area child care, preschool or kindergarten, K through 12 in colleges. So those new vaccine requirements are important to st uh, step to reduce flu-related illnesses and overall impact of respiratory illnesses during COVID pandemic. Um, next, we have the, um, some relatively good news. We were contacted by the Mass School Building Authority uh, last week to have a meeting to talk about our statement of interest application for a potential new elementary school in town. This is the first uh, meeting, so it's very preliminary, and we will keep you up to date on that process. And I just wanted to thank everybody, um, family, students, uh, and staff who were able to fill out the surveys on our reopening plans, our current models. We are already um, breaking them down, assessing them, looking at and analyzing the data. We will be reporting that information out in our action steps to improve uh, what we are doing and also to continue to do what we are doing well. Uh, each week, we believe uh, in sharing some sailor shutouts which are our way of um, spreading enthusiasm in a time where everyone could use it. We want to give a shout out to Denise Bose, uh, endearingly re referred to as Nana by many, who retired after 24 years uh, for, uh, in the food services at the Central Public Schools on Friday. Uh, food Service Director David Stevens says, Ms. Bose is one of the most caring and kind individuals that any of us have ever met, and her impact on her students shows in their smiles when seeing her. I was able to meet her a few times over the course of this of this year and I couldn't agree more with that. So good luck, Ms. Bose. Today's your first day off in, of retirement. So hopefully you're enjoying that and getting some rest and in, in well-deserved time off. And finally, congratulations to all our new registered voters, especially those at the high school. Um, if you haven't voted already, I obviously encourage you to do so tomorrow. Thank you all. Great. Well, congratulations to Nana. That's awesome news and a beautiful day to start her retirement. Absolutely. Anything else? Yeah, no. Well, thank you very much and be safe and don't forget to vote tomorrow and um, have a great day. Enjoy the day.